the lights down Hand over my crown Hand over my heart I do this for my town I do this for my crowd So turn me up real loud My time, my time None of you people can tell me to stop Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of MGR Unplugged. I'm here with Debbie today. He's uh, joining me as a co-host today again. Um, last week, we had a great episode with um, Anthony. Anthony Doc, I mean, if you guys missed it, uh, go back one week. And uh, it was it was great. I really like He's a good friend. And he always has a lot of good stuff to uh, to share with me. So we, we discussed everything. We didn't get into a lot of his past because that's what we did about a year ago. But um, we did talk about some current stuff including politics and COVID and a lot of things so if you guys missed it um, go to YouTube and or or your uh, podcast channels and uh, check it out on YouTube we probably have also not just a long episode but we also have a couple of short um, 8 to 10 minute segments with some of the highlights so you can pick it up there uh, but today David we're here to uh, have a talk about a couple of things that happened over the last uh, week or so and uh, one of the first ones that I wanted to uh, talk about is actually TikTok I don't know. If you've been following this thing. I know. I know you have. Uh, you know. Honestly, the not really. I did in the beginning, but now well, it's well, so well, convoluted. That's the, that's I was the thing. Like, oh, I um, I'll figure of, it out. I know. But that's the thing that, you know, we knew that TikTok was going to be banned in the U.S. We knew that President Trump put a deadline saying um, either it becomes American or basically mm-hmm. it's going to be banned from the uh, from the App Store for basically for uh, for American users, which is about a hundred million or something that i know of um anyways it seems like they finally microsoft was the leading uh candidate to buy it for some reason i don't know exactly why microsoft fell off of grace with tiktok or by dance the parent company then oracle came to the picture and they were supposed to be buying it out then um it was only the uh, the U.S., Canada, and Australia, I think. Uh, then it became global operations, moved the headquarters to to the U.S. And um, and then the final thing that you know was finally supposedly approved by uh, President Trump was that um, it was a partnership between Oracle and Walmart, which I don't know what Walmart was coming from to be honest so i basically it's hosted on the oracle cloud but then walmart is handling the commerce aspects of it i believe and the advertising is that what it is okay yeah Yeah, because i didn't know the connection between walmart and a retailer basically and tiktok i mean it made more sense for me when it was microsoft or any of the other i think it's a great move for walmart well for walmart yeah because like we've discussed many times, I think the future of the next five to 10 years of e-commerce is going to be social commerce. Social commerce. And that's why I said that that's Amazon's biggest weakness is that they don't have any social commerce plays yet. Uh, and now Walmart is going to own TikTok or part of TikTok, which is the fastest growing social platform. And I think it, if they know what to do with it, whether they do or not, I don't know. But well, if they know what to do with it, then they can drive... I think that it could be very lucrative for them in the future. But do you really think that they need to know much? I mean, they uh, TikTok is working very well right now. No, so no, no. Only, but I need to drive that... revenue for Walmart. Right. That's the key. Oh, for Walmart. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure they get some advertising, a lot of advertising revenue. No, 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 no. I don't mean advertising. I mean to get people to buy things from either Walmart directly or Walmart associated brands. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's... I think that they can do a lot. I don't want to get into the whole thing, but they can do a lot with that, uh, especially because TikTok has both videos and live streaming. I think they can do live stream shopping. I think they can do brand partnerships with all the top creators. Right. Uh, they can have like, so if a creator is wearing something in a video, they could have a little banner at the bottom that says buy whatever they're wearing, like things mm-hmm. like that. There's a lot you could do. I don't know if Walmart's going to do all those things, but there's a lot you can do with it. Well, just... The, the details that we have so far of the deal, which is not even finished yet, by the way, but um, it looks like ByteDance um, valued TikTok at $60 billion, which is, we were talking about this a few weeks or months yeah, ago. Yeah, initially when it was Microsoft, it was right. 20 and then 30, and I said, that is so low, it's That's crazy. Steal, right. Even right. 60, I think, is low, but it's better than 30, obviously. Uh, yeah, so they're valuating TikTok at $60 billion, which means that... Um, the 20 percent that uh, oracle and walmart are getting is actually split between the two of them not evenly it's uh, oracle is 12.5 percent and walmart is 7.5 percent 
So basically that means that the U.S. valuation, the, the U.S. portion of the valuation is basically 20% of the 60, which is $12 billion. So that's how much money the, the two American companies will be paying for the 20% worth of uh, how they pay is not even clear yet if it's stock exchange or, or or any other kind of form of payment but it's basically valued at 12 billion now the deal is not finished right now because if you guys remember uh china also changed the uh law as far as technology exchanges between countries or basically protecting their own intellectual property so now ByteDance, the the parent company of tiktok has applied for the license to export um, basically sell, in other words, TikTok to the U.S. too. Basically. The thing I don't understand is that they said the algorithm might not come with the app. Right. And if that's the case, right. Uh, I mean, the algorithm is the app. Right. That's the whole thing with the app. I mean, I, the I, filters and all, all that can be copied very easily. Right. We <laughs> see all these companies copy each other all the time with right. that shit. The algorithm is the app. And if they don't get the algorithm, then the value of the app to me is, I mean, that's 80% of the value right. and is I, the algorithm. I completely agree. And, and, and to be honest, I've been reading, uh, not a lot, but I mean, like at least five or six different articles for different news sources. And it's not very clear what they mean by the algorithm or they mean by the intellectual, pro intellectual property. Um, I mean, <clears throat> the algorithm is basically the recommendation sure. algorithm. Right. The no, it's, for it's you page is what it's called. Right. Which you know, uh, if Oracle is basically hosting the platform and everything, uh, I don't know how it can split. I mean, we have pretty smart people here to see how everything is working. And I doubt that that's the case uh, because they were also saying that, no, they didn't mean the algorithm, they mean the whole ownership, which they were saying that would still be majority controlled by ByteDance or China, basically. Whereas it looks like we will have four out of the five board members being Americans. Right. The argument was basically, okay, well, it's going to be hosted on Oracle Cloud, so an American company. The advertising is going to go through Walmart, another American company, and then they have board members so that they will have full oversight of everything going on. Right. We'll see. Um, the bottom line is that nothing is – Trump did approve the deal. In the beginning, he said, I don't know enough. I need to review it. Um, and he kind of threatened to shut it down, I think it was last weekend. Um, and then he finally said, okay. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, he's been threatening it for a while. And yeah, he said this Sunday, I think. Sunday. Was but it was stupid because it's not the app is banned. It's app downloads. Downloads. So, so if you already have it, it downloaded. Right, right. Exactly. So it was new downloads, which actually was even worse because what right, happens then a bunch of people just start downloading it who didn't have it. Right. People were downloading it fast. And if you actually end up banning the future downloads, that means that you don't have updates to your app which will be even more vulnerable to potential you know uh hacks or whatever because you have no security updates or anything like that so anyways that didn't happen and um trump did approve the deal now is by dance has applied for the license for um export um and then it's up to the chinese government to sign off so we'll, we'll, we're expecting the results or the decision in the next uh, week or so, we'll see what happens. So, but yeah, 60 billion is a little more reasonable than what we were talking about before. So, well, speaking uh, of decisions, Quibi? next topic. Quibi. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry, what, I, thought we, I thought you were going to the election. Oh, the we can debate. do that. Yeah, let's do that. Actually, it's better. They so, always so. say decision 2020. Decision, decision 2020. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I so, gotta say one thing. I want to say. I, you hear this? I hear this every single election, and it always just makes me laugh. Every election, what do they always say? This is the most important oh, election. They were even doing it in the midterms in 2018. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, guys, it's the midterms. Most people don't even vote in the I midterms. Don't anyways. even know that this is a but midterm. But they always it say like that. A test school. It's always the most important election of our lifetimes. Yeah. Well, we do have the most anticipated debate ever in the history of the u.s elections i think up until do you really now. think so well i think so now i mean i'm sure lots of people will watch I, it. I i mean i i remember i didn't care much for the debates to be honest and i didn't watch a whole lot of the uh, democratic uh debates when they were basically uh having their inter candidate debates or but for the election for the for the election debates or the uh electoral debates with the, the two candidates um, I remember last I mean, year... The Trump-Clinton ones got a lot of views. Yes, well, that's the too. thing. The last year, there were major events. 
to the point that they actually affected ratings for everything else that was happening those evenings. I mean, f national NFL football ratings were down. Uh, any sporting event that was happening, baseball, whatever, even TV ratings for the rest of the stations. I mean, everybody was covering the debate, but it was a major event when, when Trump and Hillary Clinton were on debate uh, for three times or whatever. I think this, the vice presidential debate didn't take that much uh, value. But, but uh, here's my thing with the debates. You think at this <clears throat> point that... Biden and Trump having a debate is going to sway it anybody's will. vote. Well, like you me. really think that people who, <clears throat> I mean, most people, I think, are pretty decided on who they're going to vote for. Not really. If you're a Trump supporter, you're going to vote Trump. Yes, you don't care what happens. And if you're, a, if you're a Biden supporter, if you're a Democrat, you think any Democrats are going to watch the debate and say, oh, Trump, that's a good point. I'm going to vote no, for you. I don't disagree. Not. I don't disagree with so you. So what's the point? It's just a show. I don't disagree with you, which is double negative. Maybe it's, I agree with you on that. But I think this year, more than ever, the middle of the undecided pe people or people on the fence, even people that were pro-Trump before, and now they're kind of like, hmm, I don't know if I want four more years of the same. And people that were maybe more democratic, um, thinking, I don't know if I want Biden because he's proven whatever issues he has, you know. Um, and uh, after all, Trump... They may say, okay, it didn't do too bad until before, until COVID happened or whatever. There's many more people now that are undecided or being swayed in every direction. And especially now that people I, are, hold on, people that are so edgy these days for everything that happens in the news, um, what is uh, civil unrest or obviously the COVID or any other thing that's happening now, um, it's making people, I mean, you wake up every morning, meaning me too, like, oh, it's going to be a great day. Oh, no, fuck, this happened, whatever, you know. So, so we're much more, you know, That's if you read the news. I just, huh? the, I don't consume news anymore. No, so I know. My me days neither. are great. Me neither, but it's just like, you don't have to consume news this day to see that things that upset you and things that make you feel like, okay, well, hopefully we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, you know. So I think this year more than ever, people will tune in just to find some clarity when you finally... You don't have, you're not reading headlines that may be subjective or extracted from one over, you know, major uh, event or something. Like you, many times, you actually read articles in reputable news sources. I mean, like any news organization. But you think that's not going to happen with the debates? Yeah. Well, well, debates will happen. The, the the problem that I have with debates is that they give the candidates so little time. Right. Of course. That they so cannot explain the whole thing. Debates are just like. Who can get in their quips? Who can get in the good one-liners? And that's... Uh, is that a good way to decide who should be the well, leader I mean, debates, of the free uh, world? The, we've seen how the the polls, which is another whole uh, topic by itself, but um, the polls do show that the point separation between I'm the candidates that, change not, after the debate. So obviously, sure, people, but I'm saying the debate format is terrible. Well, the format, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, they, they I mean, they. It's like debates are really. I mean, it's a little different when it's two people, but like when it was like the Democratic oh, debates, yeah, that's different. and they yeah. have ten people up there. Yeah, everybody's just trying to get their one liner in, right? So right. that they sound good yeah, and they have their are, sound. Those bite. are, but those even, are silly. I mean, I mean, even when they had the, the debate th number one and two. But the another. problem is like, okay. Because they make them talk, right? If it's like an hour, two hour debate or whatever, they have so many topics to discuss, right? No, it's like, they, they usually narrow it down. Sometimes no, know, they say like, foreign policy. Sometimes they say. Right, but, but okay, that's so fucking broad. Tonight is domestic policy. Do you know how much shit there is in domestic? That's everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they'll go and they'll spend five minutes on health care. They'll, they'll, they'll spend five minutes on health care. It's like health care is one of the most complex nuance. You could have a three hour debate just on health care policy. Forget everything else. So the idea that we're going to spend five minutes on health care and move on is fucking crazy. No. Well, OK, but let's let's stick to the actual debate. Um, it'll be what we know so far. And we're recording this on a Thursday, September 24th. And the debate is actually on the 29th, so it's like a five days away. I okay, think it's Tuesday. with what I said, now I think who has more to lose is probably Biden because Trump's base is pretty strong. I don't think Trump's base is going to be swayed by anything that happens in the debate. I think the people in the middle who are on the edge, um, if Biden is kind of uh, has some senile lapses or doesn't seem very sharp i think he has more to lose than trump if that makes sense 
Um, yeah, I think, as far as if it doesn't go well yeah. for him, I think um, I think, but Biden, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think Biden has improved. I don't know whatever he's taking, but uh, he 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 oh, has. They'll both be on Adderall. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know. They'll both but, but, be backstage popping um, pills. But Biden has been sharper lately, and not there was so many goof up answers or forgetting things or whatever. But uh, um, I think I think. But Trump can also pull his phone in his mouth all the time and, and act not presidential, which is what people want to know. You know, I mean, I, I think, I actually think some of the things but, that Trump does and says are fine. You just know how he does it or how he but says it. But my point is, I think it's not of whether you like him or not. It's just, I think Trump's base, I don't think Trump supporters are going to flip based on no, the No, they're not. They're not. Um, they, uh, we all agree that the hardcore Trump supporters are hardcore Trump supporters. And, and the hardcore Biden supporters or Democratic people are basically not going to change. But there's a lot of people that just vote for the best person for the job. And they just vote for something that is going to make their family be better in the next four years. That's what they do. And it even, even we know that as much as... People, that's why I don't believe in the polls, and that's a whole different topic, because I actually have the sneaky suspicion, that, and this is just my opinion, and I realized this in the last probably three, four days since the weekend, that this could be a repeat of what happened four years ago, where everything was like, oh, Hillary Clinton is going to win, it's going to be close, but it's going to win, and this and that, and then surprise, surprise. Basically, mm. Trump won. She won the. You think that's? She won the. The same the, thing the, happening the, now. Huh? You think the same thing's happening now? I think. I mean, remember in 2016, it was like the reason it was like a shock was because everybody said, "Oh yeah, I mean, Hillary's definitely gonna win." Like it was like a shoe in type thing, and it was. Well, right now, right I don't now. think I don't think it's a shoe in for either candidate. I think it's well, very close. Right now, Biden has been ahead for, according to the polls, for months. And he's basically yeah, about between the, depending on where you look, he's about seven, eight points ahead of Trump. Okay, so that's prior. I, I know. Okay, so I agree with you. I think yeah, I, I don't really care what the polls say either because right because um, nobody says the truth. I think yeah. I mean, I don't. Tr Trump has a strong base, and that's the problem. People live in their bubbles, right? So if you live in like L.A. or something, you think oh, there's no way Trump would win. But if you live in like wherever in the midwest or in the south or something it's the opposite it's like you would think oh there's no way biden would win like everybody i know tr supports trump or everybody i know supports biden like i think people live in their bubbles but but the thing is that by the time even if if i were like a hardcore democrat or something and then biden is telling me okay well i'm gonna go back to an uh, up up you know uh, upper class whatever situation and Biden says, okay, well, I'm going to vote back all these taxes on the this over ta uh, uh, higher tax bracket to 39.6 again. And I'm going to tax um, um, uh, capital gains at the same as the income tax rate and blah, blah, and, and all the things that he may be decided to do that are going to affect my wallet, okay? When you are by yourself, I can say to my friends, yeah, because fuck Trump, this, that, whatever, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, all that I stuff know. is very nice. It's like the closet I, Trump supporters, as right. they say. But, but when I'm at the no, booth I know and I'm by myself and nobody else is watching, I say, you know what? I kind of, I'm okay with Trump, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm going to have more money in my, back, in my pocket or my taxes. I don't on, disagree. All yeah, that no, stuff. I, I definitely and think that's what people like that. And a lot of things, a lot of that stuff happened four years ago when Hillary was like, oh, getting all the popular vote and all the stuff. But when you get to the electoral vote, which is a whole different animal, then guess what? Trump actually won easily. So so I'm kind of suspicious that all these polls and everything that have Biden up by seven points or eight points, pre-debates, I don't know what's going to happen if they're going to go uh, change people's opinions. But I have the suspicion that people at the end of the day, Trump's main point is the market, not even the economy, the market. And he's going to say, okay, well, look at our market compared to any other country market. Like European market is down. The US, yeah, it's having hiccups and stuff, but for the most part, it's better. I mean, just about a month ago or two weeks ago, S&P was record high, like pre-COVID numbers, uh, all-time highs, basically. Um, so, so we're basically, uh, and that's also for another reason, as we know, with the Fed uh, basically buying everything. But I think people at the end of the day are going to say, okay, my 401k is not really that bad. It's doing well. And I talked to people doing that stuff. They said, my stock is not doing that bad. Yeah, I lost my job, but I had a pretty good um, you know, for, uh, unemployment benefit. And then hopefully things will go back to normal. And this. 
And I think at the end of the day, people are saying, and, and honestly, I don't know if Biden will be able to do anything differently because he doesn't have a vaccine either. So, I mean, the only thing that's going to solve everything could be potentially a vaccine that people trust. And whether it's Biden or Trump, Trump says that it's going to be one in the next few months before the end of the year, then a, a more serious one maybe happening in the spring or something. But Biden is not going to have a better vaccine than Trump. Uh, that's the only thing that will solve this COVID crisis and things going back to normal. So everything else, people say, you know what? Yeah, Trump is doing his thing and it's like a reality TV. Everybody hates him. But it, it, I, I'm kind of thinking that that may happen this time again, that I'd, when it comes to voting night, we'll be yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have I, no that's idea. Why I, think the debates I honestly important. have no idea. I mean, I normally you can kind of guess a little bit. It's like, like the, the last one was a true, like upset. Right. But before that, like when Obama would run like against Romney or whatever, it was like, okay, pretty much everybody knew going into election night, right. Obama was going <clears> to <throat> win. Right. It was going to be a shock if Romney won. Right. I have no idea. Yeah, no. This I one really, I really have no well, idea who's going to win. Well, that's the thing. That's I why think I it's think, so even. That's why I think this year's debates are going to be more relevant because it's the first time that we're going to have the two face to face and uh, debating on specific issues. And what we don't know yet is they're going to be in front of each other or basically in person. That, yeah, I that, hope they are. I, I don't want a Zoom debate. I know a Zoom debate or whatever, when somebody's in the basement and somebody's in the oval or whatever place. It's just not the same. The body language is critical, you know. Yeah. So to see a headshot, plus it's, not it's gonna... hard to debate over Zoom. There's delays. Yeah. There's plus. Let's be honest. Like both these guys are old dudes, so they're not great with technology, anyways. If and, they have well, they, they have they have staff. But no, I mean, the main I know, thing is but... that those delays when they're interrupting each other, and you have the exactly. body language. When you're stuff, talking over each yeah, other, it loses. I think it's... people. I, I think even people on TV will drop out if they start seeing two talking heads on that shit. Even even when you see press conferences now in some basketball games or whatever, and you have the guys with a mask or whatever, it's like whatever. I'll read on the news tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, but I, the, the the thing is that I'm very curious to see from the media side the the viewing numbers. As far as I'm sure the it'll debates. be pretty high. I mean, no, it's, not that we it's have, on a Tuesday night. It's so. on a Tuesday night. It's 6 p.m. Eastern. No, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. I think. I uh, well, check your local listings. <laughs> but it's in the evening, and uh, I think it's going to be interesting. So, all right. So let's move on to the um, to the next topic, which is um, uh, Quibi. We are coming back to Quibi. Like it's like our favorite topic for. I don't know, since the Super Bowl, I guess, when we saw the ads and all that stuff. So Quibi is back in the news. And again, it's not back in the news for a good reason. So they did win some... Who's going to buy Quibi? Who wants to buy that shit? Well, hold on. You're jumping. I didn't say anything about buying. I didn't think it was for sale. <laughs> Anyways, no, but Quibi, you know, uh, well, you go ahead and explain Quibi since you are I mean, downloaded I think the app. know Quibi by now. I mean, okay, so it's, it's a shitty streaming service that they it's tried. It's a streaming service that they have these episodes that are like, um, I don't even know how long, like uh, like five to ten minutes, I think. Five to ten minute episodes. And they did actually a very good advertising blitz on TV uh, about a month ago, two months ago with all this. Um, um, yeah, I mean, they tried. But kind of hard I don't think people care. Uh, well, I mean, they, they definitely pulled more money from whatever they had it to. Sure, they raised how much money? A, over a billion or something? 1.7 billion or something but, like that. But who cares? I mean, I don't know. Uh, All right, well, but the thing is that they actually, it's you, funny because they did win. Do you know anybody who. I don't know Quibi. anybody. Okay. I, I see more of Quibi I don't either. in the news so, than people that say, hey, hold on, I'm watching Quibi. Do you Quibi. hear anybody talking about, yeah, did you see that new show on Quibi last night? Or did you see, like, no. Yeah. No. People talk about Netflix shows all the time or, oh, this new show's on Prime or whatever. But Do you the, ever the, hear the somebody saying... interesting thing is that uh, we had the um, the Emmys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they probably fucking paid somebody to give them some okay, Emmys. Well, okay, well, don't be so sarcastic. But they, they did win um, a, sure few, that does a, few, a few Emmys. But even... even Isn't that uh, the joke, like, uh, with the Oscars and the Golden Globes? They say yeah. you win a Golden Globe... Or no, you win an Oscar, you buy a Golden Globe. Isn't that the joke? Well, the Golden Globes are, are before the Oscars. Right, but they say, like, like basically studios just buy the Golden Globes. Oh, well, yeah, because they say it's like a prelude to the Oscars. They say you, you win an Oscar, you <clears throat> buy a Golden press. Globe. Yeah. And uh, I think you buy Emmys, too. Because that's yeah. the other thing. They give, they, gi they give Emmys to these shows that nobody's ever fucking seen. I, I mean, didn't even know the Emmys was on 
to yeah, be I, honest. I, 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 I don't totally give a damn about award shows, but it's like you give these awards to like, I mean, like they were joking uh, that uh, like Shit's Creek won a bunch of Emmys. And it hey, was I watched like, that show. It's pretty funny. And it was like, yeah, but like Shit's Creek won, uh, like, like supporting actors on Shit's Creek won uh emmys and it was like you have famous like george from seinfeld never even won an emmy and it's like what are we doing here you know is this is this is this what we want us to do i mean uh, quibi i mean they, they should have a work a viewership requirement for the emmys of if you if your show has not hit this certain amount of viewers uh then you don't qualify because who's watching these quibi shows all right what i'm talking about the show what i like is the quote from uh from um uh you know, this is when the when the Emmys were on, and then uh, Jimmy Kimmel, who was hosting the uh, the Emmys, he did said, you watch any of it? No, I didn't watch any. Yeah, I, didn't I actually know. forgot completely. I think it was football or something. But we were watching something else. I forgot what we were watching. But I was I didn't watch anything. I didn't even know. Until, I forgot about it until later. Not I started I seeing some anyways. Twitter feed or something talking Plus about it. Plus, it was but, like remote on Zoom too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all remote. Yeah, yeah. but anyways, Jimmy Kimmel was actually the host, and he was hosting somewhere, and uh, he said, he said. Uh, um, 10 Emmy nominations this year, that when he's talking about Quibi, he says uh, 10 Emmy nominations this year, including outstanding, outstanding short form comedy or drama and dumbest thing over the cost, to, dumbest thing to ever cost a billion dollars. <laughs> I was like, I'm being shot. <laughs> but anyways, uh, the point is that despite all these nominations and all that stuff for short form or whatever they were nominated, um, they supposedly allegedly put themselves up or started talking to JP Morgan to find possible exit strategies which is never a, a good word for companies meaning that they're oh, trying no, to it's a good it's a great word for companies that are successful people love exiting but yeah. not when your company just launched a few fucking months ago and you're yeah, already they're looking April to officially. sell they, they actually delayed it remember the Super Bowl had this Quibi yeah, ads no, we back in a Quibi blah 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 then they delayed the launch. And then obviously Jeffrey Katzenberg famously blamed yeah, there's a couple of boomers who didn't know anything, and they made this streaming service that was supposed he blamed, to be for young um, people, and nobody he young COVID. watched it. He blamed COVID on yeah, the on the failure COVID, of Quibi. And if it wasn't for COVID, he would have blamed the California fires. He would have come with some fucking excuse as to why it didn't work. All right. The point is, he got <laughs> filled with hubris. And basically, two people in their 60s and se I mean, isn't Katzenberg in his 70s now launched yes. this thing that was supposed to be for young people. They had no relevant stars. Their debut shows were like Reese Witherspoon. Nobody under 35 gives a damn about Reese Witherspoon. Well, okay? they have I mean, they have, all they these have shows. some other. They have Kevin Hart. They have some other. Um, they did the. Uh, the they, uh, like I said, I said from day one, if they wanted to make Quibi successful, they should have gone to the top YouTubers and TikTokers and gave them shows, and yeah. people would have watched it. So, but, but nobody cares raised, about Reese Witherspoon. They I'm raised sorry. over 1.75. Uh, billion or 1.75 from uh, big investors like Goldman Sachs, Alibaba, and all that stuff. So obviously, big, big, big shots were believing in them too. So, for whatever reason, the the question is if they sell it, and if they're looking for an exit strategy, what would that be, and who will buy it? Like you said, you I think, don't know. Uh, you think any? Um, I don't they, know. What do they want to sell for though? What price? Well, I don't know. I mean, the valuation is obviously up there because they don't have accomplished much but they have some original programming so you think uh, uh an apple but, you know everybody would be has interested a, in everybody has original programming yeah but days. you think a company like apple might be interested in buying their shows and putting them into uh, apple tv plus instead or maybe hulu I or i mean i think if anything any other streaming media companies well, hulu is disney now so no i don't think disney gives a damn about quibi disney's done Talk about two streaming services that launched in the last uh, 12 months. Disney has skyrocketed beyond everybody's possible imaginations, and Quibi has failed even harder than anybody would but have expected. But that's a strange thing. I think I actually think, for what I've seen from Quibi, they have some cool stuff. I mean, they have you ever actually downloaded it? And used I haven't it? downloaded. Okay, it. Okay, that's the whole. No, point. but you showed me. You did download it. Yeah, and you and showed it me. It sucked. It was boring. No, I thought all the show sucked. Well, the sh the content is one thing, but the features and the okay, yes, so technology some of the and all that. The technology. I mean, no, I mean the, the, the way that you have the phone vertical. Yeah, and horizontal. can I tell you something? I ended up watching all the shows horizontal, anyways. 
the vertical thing was stupid. Okay, I didn't watch any of them horizontal or any of them vertical. But then, yeah, okay, so they had a few unique features, but that none of that matters. The content matters, and the content. So sucked. what was the content? There was literally no shows on there that I liked. Literally none, and I had it for a month, and then I deleted it. Yeah, well, and I that's barely a, that's what a lot anything. of people did because they they had all these million, five million downloads or whatever. Yeah, because it was a free trial, which was a free trial. So I was like, all right, I'll try it. I'll give it a right. shot. When it came to start paying for it, then people said, "Okay, fuck it, I don't want it." It's boring. There was literally no good shows. So, on there. so let me ask you: Was it just the content? It's the content. Okay, the content. so what content, in your case, would you like to see if you were to use that app? Dude, that I is mean, different than any other thing, like going to YouTube or going whatever. I like I said. They were hot. Their whole thing was we're just gonna pay big stars a bunch of money. So they paid Kevin Hart and uh, Chrissy Teigen and Reese Witherspoon. But it's like, but they're targeting young people. I'm like, young people don't care about those people. Okay, I said. No, but they have um, Hensworth and yeah, some other more. Who cares? Well, who do you care about? I who mean, cares? these are like I said. They are their whole goal was to target young people. Like I said, go get YouTubers. Okay, they want to throw millions of dollars at people to make shows. At least go get like YouTubers and stuff where people will actually Isn't watch. Is that what it. Twitch did to a certain extent? Let they Twitch. Didn't no. they get some YouTubers or exclusive contracts with them or? Mm, they they have some exclusive, but not like Twitch is free though. It's different. Right. Right. Um, but no, and Twitch is live streaming. It's not shows or anything. But I, I would have gone and gotten David Dobrik or any big YouTuber and just basically said, here, make an exclusive show with us, right? That would actually probably have a decent chance at succeeding. But, and then the other question is like, do you need another streaming app? We I have know. so many. And I what, I mean, Quibi... Uh, I, I, they're like the a mix. They're like this little limbo zone between uh, Netflix and YouTube, and they were kind of in the middle. I don't know if five to ten minute content, anybody cares, right? There's plenty of great five to ten minute content on YouTube that you can watch, and if you want to watch something longer that's more better produced, you can watch Netflix. You know, so I don't know if the five to ten minute range is such a great thing. And the other thing was like, oh, people do it on the go. Like all these yeah. ads, people on the trains. It's like, but then you're competing not just with like YouTube, but like podcasts. Like everybody's listening right. to podcasts on their commute. It's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's so much competition with content these days. Yeah, I mean, if anything, I think COVID would have helped because people were confined that they don't have anything to do that bore out of their minds. And yeah. podcasts increased a lot, viewership, subscriptions, and everything during this time. Netflix consumption was off the charts you know everybody was just basically running so, out of content to watch and Quibi never actually did it so that means that people were not even into that short format or whatever Quibi was doing you know so either at, way at the end of the day a lot of these is just a hits business right right Netflix is a hit what was one of the big shows in the quarantine it was the Tiger King mm -hmm. right everybody was talking about Tiger King for like two weeks right I mean it is a hits business and Quibi has not had a hit and in fact, the opposite. They've had shits. I mean, they've every, had every nothing. Press, every press story or news story about Quibi has been negative. And people yeah. everywhere are pretty much laughing, <laughs> laughing about them because you have two big shots uh, that I couldn't figure out how to make this work, you know, with all the money they have behind. So we'll see. I mean, right now, I don't know if um, what the future is for Quibi, really. Um, and they are not, they're not, they're not um, confirming any rumors about selling or not but obviously uh the big glitch that they did about advertising blitz about a few weeks ago uh, didn't really capitalize into more s downloads or subscribers but even their original ad campaign which they've since dropped which is like they were like be there in a quibi yeah yeah try to make, they were like, trying, trying to make, to make it quibi like an, i'm like that like is the expression. dumbest thing yeah people don't say google it because google did ad campaigns to say google it no yeah. people did it became because it became so it became ubiquitous organic, right that people started doing it you can't force that you, right. you know how stupid it sounds be there in a quibi Shut right the fuck up it's like it's the you, lamest right. that's an example of like Honestly, not to be mean, but that's like an old 70-year-old coming with that idea and be like, oh, we'll make well, our Well, the adjective. thing is that I'm sure they had a good advertising agency behind that, that campaign. Uh, and not then, a good one. Well, yeah. Maybe they charged a lot of money, but they're not a good and one if that's the best they, they could they, come they up They didn't with. have enough 
knowledge to say, no, that's not going to work. You cannot impose expressions to people. People come with expressions exactly. and we adopt them. It's just basically the other way around. It's yeah. bottom up, not top down. So, all right. So let's move on to still in the uh, media business with uh, movie theaters and movie releases. Um, you and I actually went to see um, Tenet last, what did we go? Last Friday. Yep. Yeah. Which... You know, it's a movie that we were watch, we were wanting, to, uh, we were waiting to see for I don't know months since it was initially. Yeah, I mean, I'm so desperate for new movies now. I know, but uh, and I but, like uh, Nolan. Nolan, Christopher but. Nolan is one of our favorite directors. Him and I, and then we watched pretty much all the movies from him. I, I don't know if all the movies, but most of the most current ones. And uh, when Tenet was announced, we were looking forward to seeing it. Obviously, COVID happened. And then I think I was thinking maybe they do a streaming only release like they did with um, Invisible Man and some other movies. But no, they decided that it's going to be in theaters. So they pushed it back and they finally opened at the beginning of September. I think it was Labor Day weekend or something. And uh, we didn't go. I actually foolishly thought that um, it was going to be pretty packed in the theater. So I said, I need to see the first week. We can go social distance, whatever, second, third week, which we did. Little did I know that it was going to be so much social distance. There was a distance. good amount of social distance. I know. We were the only two in the theater in the beginning. And yeah. then right as the sh- it was starting, one guy came uh, in. Came in. One guy. It was three people in a huge theater. So that this was is it. an AMC theater, multiplex theaters here in Phoenix. And um, they were three people. Three people. And two of them the, were us. The two of us. And one and guy. another guy that sat three or four rows behind us for the entire movie. That was it. I mean, social distancing, my ass is <laughs> like nobody there, which led me to believe, how are these guys making it? Because we go there and the movie theater... The funniest part of the whole thing was, so when we go in, uh, you know, I, I bought the tickets online on my phone ahead of time, right. so I just had to scan. And uh, there's like a guy sitting there behind this like plexiglass thing. And he's like, I had to put my phone through like a hole and he scans it and he like was so lethargic like he was like a zombie and then he didn't even tell us because the ticket on my phone didn't tell us which theater it was in right and normally they tell you but he didn't say anything uh and i'm like looking at him i'm like okay and he just pointed because he goes he just points to the left but there's like a bunch of theaters that way two two major yeah he just goes over there and I'm like, and I turn around, I'm like, wait, what? And then I look back because I thought, oh, maybe it's all my thing. And it wasn't. And I was like, hey, man, what theater? He goes, oh, whatever. I forgot the number. But he goes, oh, eight or whatever. And uh, so we go. And then when we're coming out of the this theater, is two and this a half is a two and a half hour movie. <laughs> the guy, this is literally his. So we're coming because now we're behind him. And he's literally <laughs> like. His battery is run out. Like laying like this, like in his chair. Like he's so fucking bored. I mean, poor guy. He just has to sit there for hours doing nothing. Nothing. And getting, there's so few people. I know. Like he's just like. Slouchy like. <laughs> And Hope I actually, you enjoyed the movie. I was trying to be nice and say, "All right, good night." He didn't even he hear didn't me. He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. It's like and I know nothing. he can't even be on his phone because I'm sure he'll get in trouble with his boss. So he's but, like sitting there, so fucking bored. But the thing is that I mean, the whole theater they had the ticket salespeople for those who actually buy the ticket going to a theater. They had concessions too. I know they had so many. I mean, I they had more employees than I thought they would. I know. I was just surprised because there, they, I think there were. It's, as, a, it's a multiplex with 24 different theaters, which I think. Probably 18 of them were playing. Uh, I think, yeah, a lot, most of them were playing Tenet. Tenet at different times. So we yeah. had tons of shows to choose from or, or hours at times. But the theater employees were pretty much normal. I mean, I didn't see much difference other than fewer people, but there were like people behind the concessions, the bars, the ticket sales in, inside, you know, the guy with the ticket scanning, all that stuff. But I, I, I mean, I don't know if I saw 10 people there. Two of us, and then maybe another five, six, seven that were going to other theaters or something. I didn't see many people. No. I no, mean, when we went in, and this is a there Friday was literally, evening. This is Friday. This is not like when we went in. There was one couple who were buying tickets. Yeah. That was it. In the whole lobby, right. right? There were two people besides us, and then obviously when we went to the theater, it was just us, and then there was one guy. So we saw three other customers in the whole time we were there. And again, That's how empty it was. And this is a Friday night. This is like Friday at the yeah. movies. Okay, well, anyway, so my so point... So basically, AMC is going to go fucking bankrupt because there's no way they well, can sustain this. But that's the point. This. I was looking at Tenet's numbers and 
apparently, you know, they were saying this is not a three. Uh, you know, every time every time you see the movie releases, they say, okay, the worst the weekend uh, box office numbers, or you know, for the three day weekend, they consider Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And now they're saying, well, this is not a three day weekend. This is going to be a thirty day period to see the numbers due to the COVID and all that, which you understand. I mean, social distance, the half of the people in the theaters, if that. So, Tenet in three weeks hasn't done too bad. Uh, the the U.S. numbers. Uh, they say it's about 36 million in domestic um, revenues, and they say they estimate worldwide because in other countries, theaters have been open, especially in the China and all these big countries. I think South America still has issues that they haven't opened, but European theaters and China and, and Southeast Asia and all that stuff are open. So worldwide, they made about 250 million dollars for the movie Tenet in theater distribution which is really not bad. But obviously, it's not for one weekend. Normally, they get that in, in one opening weekend, like three days. Now they're talking about three weeks or almost a month. So we'll see how that expands in the future. But for the that's good for the movie, for the studio, because they, they, need, they estimate that the movie costs like 200, between 200 and 250 million dollars to make, yeah. which is the most expensive Christopher Nolan movie so far. Uh, oh, yeah, it was a big production. Right. I mean, I don't want to say it's, anything spoiler or anything. But no, I mean, I, mean, I could even there say... There were some huge set pieces right. with tons of, like... Oh, I don't want to say anything, but I uh, haven't no, seen a, it's it. It's a big I movie. Mean, it's and, a Nolan movie. And, and then I guarantee was, that you probably won't even understand the movie the first time you watch it, which... Well, I'll give my review in a minute, but finish your but point. But anyways, yeah, my point is that the movie was expensive. They, they think that they will have to probably revenue $500 million to basically start making profit. So that's... Uh, how, I don't think how, that's gonna happen though. Well, they they estimate that down the road when they get to streaming and stuff, they will okay, get there. Okay, maybe, but right, right. In not, not theaters, just, not it's theaters. Not gonna no happen. theaters. They, if they get to three fifty, they think it's a success. Um, but um, th that's on the movie production side. But on the theater part, I don't know how these guys are gonna make it because AMC was threatening or saying they were gonna go bankrupt back in April or something. Then they decided that they were going to open and allow people to go in without masks or anything. And then the governors of each state said, fucking happen. You're not going to do that. I know, but it was kind of, I mean, you, you were, we wore a mask in the lobby, but once you got in the theater, you didn't have to wear the mask anymore. Uh, yeah, the, well, the rule is that you wear it unless you're eating something. But obviously, when you're in a the theater by yourself, it's like it's silly. Yeah. But you were supposed to, I mean, the, even the movie, I mean, the preview says, or the whatever uh, warnings in the beginning, they say. There is general, nobody checking. That's right, sure. there's nobody checking for sure. But then if you are a theater with two people, then it's like, okay, and you are basically together. It's like, all right. Uh, but the point is that the movie theaters, I don't know how they're going to make it because AMC was basically cashing in on these movies saying, okay, we're going to open for Tenet and Rambo, Last Blood, or come off a few other movies that are coming to theaters. And um, so they were counting on that to save Grace and save him. And I honestly don't think that it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to be in the fall when maybe more movies open and people feel more comfortable. But the other, the other shocking thing for me or for us when we went out like all the movie theaters, they have all this lineup of restaurants that normally feed off of movie goers. So people go to the movies and then either before or after go to a restaurant, have dinner, a snack or something, and then go to a movie or go to, the, to dinner after the restaurant. Well, the restaurants outside the movie theater were packed. Were actually pretty full. I mean, for, I think they were yeah, a capacity. They were full. Oh, yeah, they Yeah, I mean, considering that you have to have social distance and all the stuff, but there were sushi restaurants and Italian restaurants and this. There's like a few around the movie theater and they were all packed to the new capacity with the distancing. But the, there were three people coming out of the movies, which is basically the two of us and the other dude. So obviously the, the restaurants now are not becoming an anchor for the theater and the theater is, no, is definitely not, the, the restaurants can survive without people going to the movies. People are going to a restaurant, just not to the movies. So I don't know, something, there's a disconnect over there with, with that stuff. So go ahead and get to the uh, uh, movie uh, review or something. It was good. I need to watch it again. Uh, yeah, when it's on streaming, it's one of those. I mean, if people know Nolan, I mean, you know, like it's very Inception esque, like Interstellar, Inception. They're always very heady movies. Time travel. Um, yeah. I mean, time travel movies are tough, man. Time travel. You time, just the mic. <laughs> time travel movies are tough because there's always going to be plot holes and loopholes and all that. And oh, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, that's because time travel doesn't make sense. But. I mean, movie was beautiful, you know, great cinematography, all that, great acting, all of that. It, it was it was good. It, it was just the plot was a little confusing 
and some of the writing, in my opinion, as far as the uh, the storylines, it was a bit, I don't know. I think it could have been done better, in my opinion. Obviously, easy to say, but not my favorite Nolan movie. No, definitely not. I think Inception was better. Interstellar was better. Dunkirk was better. Dunkirk was good, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean... It's, it's a good movie. It was it's, it's refreshing a little more of a to mind go to twister. a movie. Yeah, it's definitely a little more of a mind twister. I think that, the, like you said, the... But the, the acting was great. Yeah, I know. The, they, by the way, did you know the main character, his name is... Uh, oh, what's his name? He's the son of Denzel Washington. Oh, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. No, I didn't know Yeah, either. his last name's some, something Washington. I forget his name. But uh, yeah, so, he's the son of Denzel Washington. I didn't know that. Wow. He was in uh, the other movie, um, Black Klansman 2, and... Um, hmm. But anyways, I didn't know he was Denzel Washington's son. Yeah. So, anyways. Well, one little, thing that we noticed too. Through. He's a good that, actor. He's really that good. That was kind of like annoying him. was the volume of the. Of yeah, it was really loud. Yeah. Like, and I don't know really if that was loud. an effect. I don't know how they said the volume for the movie. It's like the, the, the playback sound volume. First of all, the movie is full of action scenes with sound effects and bombs and explosions and stuff, which is fine. But the volume was so loud that it was ear piercing sometimes. Oh yeah, and I think it's because they have a level that is set up, and they set up for a theater that is full of people, which we buffled the sound. But when the theater was empty, maybe it was more echoish or louder. I don't know. And it was, it was so loud. It was very I mean, very loud. There were times where you and I, I mean, yeah, we were both. And kind you of, have, you work on cars and shit with like engines, so you don't yeah. have sensitive ears. And you said you used to be at like a security guard at concerts. Yeah, I know. I'm very used so to So you're luck. used to that. I mean, there were times where both you and I in like the action scenes were literally like, oh my God, like yeah, covering was, our it ears. It was constant, very loud. And uh, but I think that's, again, they probably had to look at that because the when theaters are empty, you don't buffer so much sound or something. I don't know. It sounded like real loud. So, but that's just a technical issue. So, all right. So um, final points for this uh, podcast. And we go into the electric car uh, territory. Quick news about uh, Tesla. You're a big fan of Tesla, so I'm going to let you take the lead with um, Elon's um, battery day, which I didn't know exactly what he was. And before. I mean, the, it was just. A, I, I didn't watch it. I just read the summary. Right. Well, yeah. But I mean, I mean, he just basically said, yeah, our batteries are cheaper, so we're going to make cheaper cars. I mean, that was basically the battery today. But and they explained but how they're he making also, cheaper cars. But he also announced the uh, the new Model S features. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 520 mile range. 0 to 60 in 1.9, I think, um, seconds. And, uh, you know. Horsepower increased. Like, oh, it was like 1,200 horsepower or whew. something. That's uh, like. Yeah, but it's not cheap. That one is like, it's going to be like 140 something thousand. Uh, but then the other, the bigger announcement to me was that uh, they said their goal is within three years to have a $25,000 Tesla. Uh, so that'll probably be a Model 3 or maybe a new model. I would assume it's the Model 3, just cheaper. That And th the whole thing was. Uh, they're going to try to get off of cobalt, mm -hmm. which was a big thing because cobalt. What the fuck is going on here? That's right. Cobalt, um, you know, the sourcing of cobalt is questionable. Yeah. There's lots of, it's, you know, a lot of it is like child labor and stuff. So that's why they want to get off of cobalt and then basically just make the batteries cheaper. And they have all these, you can look at the presentation, they explain the. The technicality well, the is for me is that, how they're making that the batteries cheaper. As much as, and then we'll get quickly into the other Nikola announcement, but um, um, Elon Musk has had a set course with Tesla. Oh, I and think. cash flow positive for the sixth quarter. In yes, a row, for I the think. sixth quarter. So, so they're making money. So they are making money. They are um, making progress more than anything else. And, and they are proving that this battery technology is not something you can just jump into and, and succeed like other manufacturers are trying to do. Um, so there's a lot of obstacles, a lot of, uh, and obviously we know that the batteries are the oh, big. And, and the other thing was price. they want to be yeah. completely, um, vertical as far as their production. So right now they buy all their, a lot of their batteries from Panasonic, which is the largest battery maker in the world. And they want to make all their own batteries in house. Right. They don't Once have to buy from Panasonic factories anymore. and all that stuff already. And so. then they'll be selling batteries to other car companies too. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, we have Nikola, who uh, the CEO unexpectedly, I think, for most of the people, resigned uh, earlier this week. I think it was uh, Monday or Tuesday or something. 
So this is uh, uh, Trevor Milton is his name. He's the CEO of uh, Nikola Motors, I think it's called, or I forgot what the name is. But this is the company that just um, basically merged or was partially acquired. Or this is the money laundering organization. Yeah. He, they, the GM actually acquired like Ooh, 20, hold on, it was 20%, I yeah. think. Uh, something, I forget, yeah. So anyways, they did that. And then at the same time, they were accused of... Um, basically allegedly um misinforming investors and pumping out their own it's technology called, it's called fraud. fraud okay well I, it's not proven so until fraud. you are first of all well anyways they were they, they were accused of doing that um and then even automakers to you know to pump their technology and everything maybe gm fell into a trap i think I, I think <laughs> this gm thing is the perfect perfect um like summary of the difference between new up and coming companies like a Tesla and other companies versus the old companies. GM has no fucking clue what they're doing. They have no idea how they're going to compete in the new electric car landscape. They say, oh, there's this company named Nikola. First of all, at least come with an original name for God's sake. There's already fucking Tesla. You just <laughs> took the first name of the guy now. I mean, what kind of shit is that? But second of all, they go to this company that has nothing. They roll a car down a hill in their fucking demonstration because it doesn't even move. They well, have no, no, it didn't, no, they didn't even build a car yet. They, they have no technology. They don't have anything. They've never made a dollar in revenue, a penny in revenue, nothing. They're worth $30 billion. They give them $2 billion or something for nothing. No, how much did they give them? I don't even oh, remember. Quite a bit. Yeah. Billions of dollars. Yeah for nothing, for a stake in the company, and a fucking week later, the CEO resigns, and it looks like the whole company is gonna go to zero. Well, the, the, stock, the stock went down logically, and, uh, and then- so, um, But my point is, this perfectly encapsulates how fucking poorly managed companies like GM are, and they are so clueless as to what to do. I mean, it's embarrassing. But to me, it goes further than if, that. If you own GM stock, this is not financial advice. Sell your fucking stock. Because this just shows you how incompetent the leader... GM, you're one of the largest car manufacturers in the world. Do you have no ability to evaluate that this company is a fucking fraud and can't make well, shit? Well, but before that... What are they that's doing? The, that's my point. Before that, this company went public on June 4th. Yeah, okay, I don't that know was their IPO. Who they raised billions from? Well, I have I know, no idea. But that's the thing: to go public, you have the tour and all that stuff where they evaluate you, and you have these big investment banks coming to your evaluation, and you have to prove your technology. How in the world this company went public when they were so fucking? But even out of before they went thinner? public, they raised hundreds of millions. Yes, they did. A lot of companies do that because investors have a lot of money; they just want to put it somewhere. But the fact that they went public, the stock doubled, blah, 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 all that stuff. It was in, even attracted to GM. GM invested 20% for billions of dollars. And now the guy basically is accused of fraud and uh, falsifying information. And then he says he resigns. And get this, he still walks away with $3.1 billion. Okay. So that was part of the agreement, which good for we'll him. What happens. He tricked them all. <laughs> he tricked them all. He got all these idiot investors idiot GM to give him billions of dollars for nothing and, and you know for a, nothing a, and now he's walking away a billionaire that's the easiest path to being a billionaire ever yeah. forget having to work hard build something that's meaningful no fuck that just lie and bullshit your way into saying you're gonna build a electric truck company and then when things don't work you say well I'm a billionaire so see ya yeah I made my money um, all right, so on a final, final note, um, and this I just read yesterday that I, th I guess California signed, uh, Governor Newsom of signed a bill to basically um, limit new car production to just electric cars. By, yeah, 2035. By 2035. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you, you don't know, have faith in that? or No, because they don't even have a, a working electric grid. How are you going to have electric cars? <laughs> they have fucking power outages every day now. Yeah, I know. How are they going to have electric cars? Well, I mean, that that's up to him on the No, on it's the not donors. up to him. Well, Everybody was saying it. It's really ambitious and brave of Gavin Newsom to do something and commit to something that by the time it actually has consequences and will be in place, he'll be long fucking gone. Well, I know. I know. But not only that, he's saying... It'll be oh, some other governor's problem. Yeah, but they say, they say, we have a pollution problem and they have these images of the wild 
wildfires in San Francisco, Orange County. No, you Sky have a government competence problem. That's what you yeah, have. Yeah, I know. I know. They, they, this, this is an example of a Gavin state. Newsom cuts all the wildfire budgets, right. like fighting budgets and prevention budgets, and then says, oh my God, there's fires. Yeah, and then there's all these fires are causing pollution, so let's make the electric car companies Can or, I, or, or the, or the uh, car manufacturers uh, convert to electric cars by 2035. Like it's like a I was thinking about switch. this the other day. Think about, like they talk about all the billions in damage that these fires do. Is there anything that it has better ROI? Uh, the budget for the fire prevention thing was so comically low. I mean, we're talking not even, forget billions, forget even hundreds of millions. It was like in the tens of millions. Yeah. And he cut it in half or something or cut it even more than that. And it's like, for if you if you need to raise the budget from thirty million a year to hundred million a year, which is nothing for California with the taxes they have, to spend a hundred million dollars a year to save billions and billions and billions in property in damage, damages, is that not the best cost. ROI that they have? Yeah, yeah. Why don't they just basically quadruple the firefighting budget and fire prevention budget? They know how to do it. And they if know how to if do you're it. you're so vulnerable to any situation, whether it's a fire, a shaking of the earthquake, minor earthquake shake or something, just put it underground or do something different. Don't have it all exposed. I mean, there's other options to put power grids that are not necessarily exposed to any fire that knocks on one pole, blacks out the entire city. You know, there's other options. And they but should the, have thought about that. The whole fire thing, I mean, we know how to prevent forest fires. It's a, there's a very specific science to it. There are experts in this. And you basically do controlled burns. Mm -hmm. There's all types of things that you can do. Yeah. And they just cut the budget so they can't do it as much. I mean, just triple the budget. They are doing it by nature. They're having a herd immunity fire because at the end, there's not going to be anything else to burn. I mean, I mean just... you build cities like San Francisco basically in the middle of a forest, right? Because that's all, it's all surrounding San Francisco is like forest. And right. you have these dry grasslands and hills. Okay, so yeah, of course there's fires. Okay, it's natural. Yeah. But you know how to prevent them. This shouldn't be... This is not new. Fires have been around fucking forever, okay? California has been dealing with fires for 150 years since people started moving there. They know yeah. how to deal with them. Yeah. They just well, California don't have the has budget. a lot of issues, and that's part of the reason why a lot of people are leaving California these days. And, uh, and uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a shame because, I mean, California is a beautiful state. And uh, between the mayor of LA and, and the governor... Down they're shutting down their nuclear plant. Yes. So they're shutting, even the one fucking big renewable energy thing, Newsom shutting it down. They have a lot of issues and we discussed them to death with between the homeless and this and that and all the laws. Anyways, I, I don't want to expand into that anymore. It was a closing note. So um, that's it for uh, today. Anything else, uh, David? That's it. All right, so next week, um, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about, well, actually, next week we'll have a little maybe recap of the debate, uh, which we started with, and then uh, we'll probably do a little more social media and some other topics that I wanted to, iOS reviews and things like that, so if everything goes fine, depending on what else happens in the news. But until then, um, have a great time, and uh, thank you for watching, listening, and if you just share this podcast or this video with one person, we'll really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.